two years ago, I created a project called NRF Box. Many of you liked it, tried it out, and even built your own NRF Box. It had a few features such as 2.4 GHz scanner, jammer, and a channel analyzer. But now it's time for... So I designed a new version, the NRF Box V2. The new version looks great, but stick around while I walk you through its features. Let's start with the software. The scanner features allows you to scan 2.4 GHz frequency spectrum, which is commonly used by devices such as Wi-Fi routers, Bluetooth devices, and other wireless devices. This helps in identifying active channels, detecting nearby wireless devices, and the signal strength of each device. The analyzer features provide a deeper analysis of the wireless spectrum. It can capture and analyze packets being transmitted over the air, providing insight to find out the least crowded channels. Also, we can use the analyzer to monitor for unusual activity and detect network attacks. The jammer features actively interferes with wireless communication by sending out noise or signals on the same frequency as the target devices. Jamming can disrupt communication between devices which might be useful for security purposes, such as preventing unauthorized data transmissions or disconnecting devices from a network. In controlled environment, jamming can be used to prevent unauthorized drone operations or to secure an area from wireless communication temporarily. Of course, don't forget jamming is illegal in many jurisdictions unless used under specific conditions. These specific jamming features target Bluetooth Low Energy or BLE communications. BLE is commonly used for low-power devices like fitness trackers, smart home devices, and IoT applications. The BLE jammer disrupts these communications. This can be used in security testing to see how BLE devices handle loss of connectivity or to prevent unauthorized BLE communications in sensitive areas. The BLE spoofer mimics or replicates Bluetooth low energy signals, effectively pretending to be another BLE device. A common application is in pen testing, where the goal is to test the robustness of the device authentication mechanism and ensure that devices only connect to trusted counterparts. This can be used to test the security of BLE devices or BLE networks by simulating an attack where an attacker impersonates a legitimate device. Sour Apple typically refers to a specific attack that targets Apple devices. Security researchers use this feature to demonstrate how certain Apple devices might be vulnerable to Bluetooth-based attacks. This video is sponsored by GLC PCB. If you're looking to bring your electronics project to life, look no further than GLC PCB. GLC PCB offers it all. EDA software for seamless design, high quality PCB manufacturing, extensive component sourcing, precise stencil service, and complete PCBA assembly. With fast turnout times and affordable pricing, GLC PCB is perfect for everyone from hobbyists to professionals. Simply head over to glcpcb.com, upload your PCB design files, select your preferences, and your custom PCBs are on their way to you in no time. Use the link in the description down below to get an $80 new user coupon. And now back to the video. Let's continue by discussing the hardware. First, I'll explain the components I use in the PCB and then I'll demonstrate how to test this project without the need for the PCB. The CP2102 is a USB 2 UART bridge, which lets us communicate between a computer and a microcontroller via USB, which in this project I use it for programming and debugging the ESP32 microcontroller. The LF33 is a low dropout voltage regulator that provides a stable 3.3 volt output from a higher voltage input such as a lithium battery. Also, the TP4056 is responsible for charging the lithium battery that powers our device. One of the main components of NRF box is NRF24, which I used GT24 mini version for this project. NRF24 helps us to scan, analyze, and interact with other devices operating on the 2.4 GHz frequency. 
It supports the scanner, analyzer and the jammer functionalities by enabling the device to detect and transmit signals across various channels. The ESP32 serves as a microcontroller, handling all processing tasks, including managing communication protocols and executing software features like scanning, jamming and spoofing. For this project, I use ESP32WROOM32U with external antenna connector. The OLED display is used to provide a user interface, showing real-time data such as scanning results, detected devices and other relevant information. The OLED display uses the I2C protocol. You can use the OLED module for your DIY version. What's left is micro switches, antenna connectors and passive components like capacitors and resistors. Now as you can see here, I've set up the entire project on the breadboard with modules connected using simple jumper wires. This means that you don't need a custom PCB to get started with this project. All the components I've used in this project such as ESP32, NRF24 and OLED display and other parts are available as individual modules. You can easily connect them on the breadboard like I've done here. And remember, all the code and schematic for this project are available on my GitHub and website. So whether you want to keep it simple on a breadboard or take it to the next level with custom PCB, you have everything you need to get it started right away. Give it a try, experiment and have fun building your NRF box.